Hello there, space wizards, plastic spacemen, and rebel princesses. This is Todd Hoffman, and you are listening to Big T, a little T, not a little T, and a little T, a Star Wars podcast. Welcome to episode 55. We are on the double nickel. I can't believe that. That is so cool. So, uh, unfortunately, Trent can't join me tonight, but we are going to be talking about uh, the third episode of a Star Wars Bad Batch Replacements. Uh, not too much going on this week. Uh, just doing a little bit of, you know, home improvements. Uh, trying to build a, um, uh, a garden for Jen. So we're working on that outside all weekend. So that's been fun. But essentially, uh, we are uh, just, uh, you know, Getting through, getting through the last couple of weeks of school for Trent and Ellie, so that's that's been pretty exciting. But uh, we are super excited to talk today about some Bad Batch. Uh, I might be also be playing some Resident Evil Village, but uh, you know, uh, other than that, keeping keeping pretty uh, tied up with work and everything else going on. Uh, but yeah, let's just dive right into it. So. Again, uh, this aired on, uh, what was that date? Uh, it aired on, um, I believe, shoot, was that just last week? It's so hard. May 14th, holy cow. Uh, Runtime is a little over 24 minutes, but uh, essentially we are continuing right where we left off. Uh, the Bad Batch team got cut out of the way and um, got, got his family out, uh, you know, and out of, um, harm's way from the empire and now we have the bad batch team kind of flying through hyperspace and trying to figure out the next move uh the official description for this is the batch gets stuck on a desolate moon pretty much sums up the <laughs> sums up the the show but i really do enjoy this episode uh i think one of the things that the bad batch is definitely establishing is that it is establishing that we're going to find out a little bit more about what's happening and how the Empire actually came to be, uh, especially this kind of messy clone trooper, uh, stormtrooper uh, transition. Um, and so I'm very interested to see where this is going, what, what's happening. Our, our boy Tarkin is heavily involved. And so um, we're, we're going to dive right into this episode. Essentially, uh, again, the, the the shuttle, which is called the Havoc Marauder, uh, is going through hyperspace and they're doing their thing, having some chows, some having those cool, good old ration bars, uh, you know, that Luke had and Dagobah that were like just basically granola bars or whatever. But essentially, there's not much left and they need to get to a next stop to kind of figure out what's going on. Uh, we got a problem with the ship. So uh, something goes wrong. Basically, uh, it essentially echoes like, yeah, the power capacitor, you know, uh, has blown. Maybe it had a bad motivator. Maybe something. The flux capacitor. I don't know. It's really a power, power capa capacitor. But essentially, they crash land on a moon. Uh, and the moon is very much your typical kind of moon with these kind of big old rocks and crevices and stuff. It kind of looks like uh, your normal uh, moon that you would see. Um, and there's some damage. So they got to figure out what the heck to do. Um, and uh, the atmosphere is not breathable. So they have these kind of cool uh, masks that kind of light up their face. Uh, I thought it was kind of a cool design. Um, and so they, they have to kind of do a recon uh, based on the ship's analysis and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, they have to figure out, okay, how do we get out of the jam based on text, uh, you know, little thing. There's like, oh yeah, we got this capacitor blown and we got to figure it out. Um, one of the things that's interesting is Omega is like, Hey, you know, maybe it's over here and it was actually like crosshairs gear. And so it's, it's sad. Uh, there's a moment of kind of awkward silence and, you know, records basically like I miss them. And uh, I, I think there's still, obviously, it's still a gap because they they definitely miss them and they want to see what is, why did Crosshair kind of turn on them? So that that definitely is a plot thread that's going to be continued. Um, also, one of the things that is kind of foreshadowing, during the rough landing, they get 
they get Omega and, and Wrecker are in their crash crash harnesses in the back of the ship where Hunter and um, uh, Echo and Fives are kind of up in front and essentially they have a big crash and Wrecker hurts his head. Part of me feels like that is a plot thread that we're going to see later. He just says he has a headache, but it could be something to do with a head root shot. I don't know. Maybe I'm grasping at straws, but I think that is definitely going to be something that we could see uh, going forward for sure. Um, so essentially, though, we have we it's really right now it's just two plots. So we have the the A plot is obviously the crash landing trying to get off this moon. And the B plot is what's going on with our good friend Crosshair. Um, essentially, again, uh, Governor Tarkin is seeing that he is taking to, um, I guess they're doing more um, tr programming, training or something um, to, uh, and they call it, Project War Mantle and Rampart, this Vice Admiral Rampart, uh, confirms that, like, hey, I got these new recruits. And so the idea is blending the two. Essentially, you want recruits that are um, willing to fight for the Empire and you have this kind of elite clone leading them. And so they thought it would be a good idea to kind of figure out, hey, let's have this kind of Empire Empire elite squad and then crosshair is going to lead them and essentially rampart and what rampart selling tarkin is like hey we get them trained by the clones clones are too expensive um and we will um get uh we will get uh the the more loyalty with these kind of new recruits so i think it's interesting uh tarkin's kind of sold on it um and we 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 blast back right to the moon. Um, and this is a classic Star Wars trope. Love this. Uh, we got a creature. Uh, it's some kind of moon dragon. Um, and essentially, they are they find where they need to replace this capacitor. It's out on the outside of the hull of the ship. And but they see scratch marks on the ship, and there's a monster. Uh, and it's pretty cool and scary. And uh, it's, I mean, again, this is similar to what we see in Empire Strikes Back with um, Leia and C3PO and the Minox. So, Minox, similar to this moon dragon, is essentially um, they feed off of power, pure energy. Um, so, it's kind of this kind of cool thing. Uh, so this creature is no different and goes for the power source and takes it, takes the power source. No. So then, okay. So that happens. Um, and then we go back and essentially now the, the we've got four elite squads. Um, they say something very, one of the guys says something very interesting, which, uh, you can kind, kind of unpack for a little bit and essentially says, Hey, the Empire has a roof over my head. I get fed. I get all these kind of amenities with the Empire, which I didn't get with the Rebellion. And so here you see like the qual. Essentially what he's saying is like the quality of life, even though I might not be fighting for the right cause or I might be doing something a little bit different, but I am essentially I'm happy and content with the Empire because I get stability, which is interesting. Um, so they, they essentially, you know, just says, Hey, I got, I got, got these amenities. I'm good. I'm good with the empire. Um, and so then they kind of have this, essentially they're going back to, they're trying to find the Saw Gerrera kind of camp and they're going to try to redo, uh, what they tried to do with the Bad Batch and Tarkin failed and essentially saying, Okay, let's see how the Lee Squadron does with this. We, we know that some of the base camp is still there, and we need to kind of figure out what we're going to do there. Uh, well, they know what they're going to do there. They're trying to wipe them out, all of them. And so um, the Lee Squadron uh, with, with Crosshairs goes there. Um, and so essentially now we switch back. 
we're back. Okay, so now we have uh, Omega and Hunter are tracking the um, the little moon dragon, and so Omega's kind of asking about his skills, and so one of his enhanced skills and why he's Hunter is that he could track, and so Omega's asking if he could track, and there's this kind of cool tender moment also about like. Um, we have to, we all have skill, skills, everyone's enhanced, um, and Omega even includes Crosshair, and so she's trying to heal that wound that is still there, which I find, find very interesting. Um, so, go back, now we're back to the planet, uh, the, the, um, the Elite Squad with Crosshair is on the planet, um, and they're tracking them, kind of know the drill, uh and they are not there's a couple soldiers but there's a couple civilians um and this is where crosshair steps up and becomes the alpha in a sense and what what's going on is that one of the guys is like dude these guys are just civilians you know we shouldn't really do anything and crosshair is like a good soldier follows orders and Shoots, I think his designation is like yes, a one. I'm not sure. He shoot this dude, he gone, and the other troopers are like, Oh, crosshair means business, and we should follow orders. And and essentially crosshair puts him to the task is like finish the job, which again, from what we saw in Bad Batch, you know, uh the prior up or yeah, the prior episode is like they didn't do the deed or whatever so we got that going on um it's it's pretty interesting so crosshair is like yep we're gonna get the job done um now we kind of go back uh we go kind of go back to the moon um they track the the dragon the dragon kind of knocks out hunter omega tends to him gets him breathing he knocked off his mask and kind of knocked unconscious and so Omega's like, I can do this. And she's kind of crying for help, but she's like, nope, I'm going to do this. Uh, she's small, and she sees uh, the dragon kind of burrow into one of the little caves. So she grabs Hunter's Blaster and is like, I'm going to do this. And so we get this kind of cool little scary monster thing where she's crawling, looking for, she's got a flashlight and her gun, and she's in the tunnels doing a little tunnel rat and trying to figure out what's going on. And she basically comes across like a den, like where this creature's at. And there's all these kind of like little doohickeys and doodads that he uh, likes, he or she likes. Um, and so she finds the capacitator. Uh, she retreats apart and, and essentially the creature's there and roars ah omega's mad she's got the blaster she's like should i shoot her shoot this per shoot this dragon moon dragon dude thingy and um again this is very similar we see this all the time i mean the most recent example is obviously with ray and the snake the cave snake in uh the rise of skywalker uh we see that the snake is scary and they want to shoot but they don't and uh ray finds out the snake is injured ray puts in her life force and heals the snake and eventually leads to a path of them to get out of the, the sinking fields and all that kind of stuff. Uh, here, Omega realizes like uh, the creature is a being, a life being, and maybe there's a better way. Um, and she sees that it's just his home. He's got his, you know, he's got his Xbox. He's hanging out, chilling. This is his home. He's got all these kind of cool little uh, doohickeys that around. Um, and so she doesn't doesn't shoot the dragon, kind of sees the surroundings. Um, she essentially throws her flashlight, um, and it's kind of this cool moment where the dragon kind of goes after a flashlight from a dis uh, distraction perspective. But then he's got this kind of cool, like, little uh, absorbing the charge, and he's got these kind of cool, like, energies going through him and stuff like that. So he just wants a snack. He just wants a flashlight snack. Mega does that, um, and essentially uh, she recovers the capacitor, um, which is cool. Um, and essentially, Hunter is now waking up. He's like, 
yo, where were you? And she's like, ah, I got this. And like hand him back the blaster. Hunter, again, is surprised. I think, again, this just shows that Omega is more than capable of holding her own, even at this young age. Again, we go back to kind of the the first theme or the first thing that was kind of said in Bad Batch. Like, Caminos don't mess around. They are, are cloned for a purpose. And so we're, I mean, essentially through Bad Batch, we're trying to figure out what is Omega's purpose. So, uh, yeah, it, it, she definitely has leaning towards the force i think uh she definitely has an innate ability to read people to understand their feelings uh similar to again the moon creature she paused and was like yeah there's something else going on here and i don't need to um essentially do anything with this um I, i'm gonna let the situation kind of play out which is interesting so now we go back uh to camino the lead squadron comes back uh and Tarkin's like they're missing one and essentially um Crosshair's like we got the job done and so um Lamasu Nalasi I think uh they're so they're essentially the Caminos are feeling recognizing real quickly that Tarkin and Rampart are kind of going this pro recruit uh, strategy and I like this little sidebar conversation with the Caminos and they're just like yeah we gotta do something you know and and so uh, they're they're looking at like because the Django Fett code kind of chain is de de degrading uh, they kind of need a new genetic source and so and essentially what they're saying is like there are Camino property and maybe we just need one. And so, yeah, this is kind of interesting. This kind of goes to this ethical thing where it's like, they're trying to keep their job, the Caminos and like, Hey, we got a good thing going and we want to continue that. But the empire is like, yeah, we're just going to either, we're just going to recruit these, you know, the, the soldiers and stuff like that. So I find that very interesting. Uh, and so, we see this little part where they kind of go back to the barracks and it's still somewhat bad batched. Uh, uh, you know, Crosshair has, uh, he goes back to his bunk and there's a little, I don't know if it's remorse. Or I'm not really, it's hard to read from Crosshair's perspective, but they're like, these are kind of strangers staying in this room when it was definitely filled with a little bit more, um, uh, I, I don't know what the word would be, but he just feels like it, it's definitely different and he's not sure what to make out of it yet. Um, and if he's truly just going to that route of like, I'm just a good soldier and I follow orders, you know? Um, um, yeah. So kind of a cool thing, uh, there it's hard to tell. Like, I like the idea that Omega is trying to, lead hunter to like hey crosshair is not totally lost and they put in these moments where maybe maybe there is something there um besides that he's getting brainwashed in a sense from the empire that crosshair still misses his friend so i'm really interested to see how that kind of plays out um and then find the final kind of cut back we go back one more time to the shuttle they get it repaired, tech fix it up, bing, bang, boom, here we go. Um, but here is Wrecker, um, being the teddy bear he is, essentially uh, giving Omega a surprise. Uh, and he refurbishes uh, a gun port in the ship, and he changes that into Omega's room because it also, at the beginning, Hunter because of the ration bar situation, like, you know, a, a Wrecker just obviously takes one. He's like, Hey, I want more. And he was going to give Omega was going to give her ration bar, uh, back to Wrecker. And this is kind of a nice thing where Hunter's like, Hey, you're, you're, you know, you're kind of an adult here. So don't take her stuff. And she doesn't even a bed. And so that's stuck with Wrecker. And he essentially, uh, 
made a room. She never had a room, obviously, like, being a clone. And so, uh, and essentially, this establishes Omega in um, the squad. So, yeah, a very cool ending. Um, you know, again, uh, a big fan of the weekly format. I love having my Fridays with Bad Batch. I mean, this is something that continues with... Um, with uh, Mandalorian, so super excited to see a weekly format here. Um, and you know, it's it's a great. It's it's getting the, this one dark, and I like how they went a little dark here. Um, and so I'm interested to see what they can do and how they can make this play out a little bit better um, as far as how the Empire is established. And clearly, it's looking for more of this recruitment thing, but. Uh, love seeing the kind of breadcrumbs that they're they're leading uh, to future episodes. So we'll see. Uh, very interesting. So there you go. That's our main topic for our, for today. Um, uh, yeah, you can again, you can uh, find us anywhere on the socials. Uh, that's a big T, little T uh, podcast on Instagram, B L I L T podcast on the Twitter, and then Twitch.tv forward slash Big T little t and you can find us all there um hey we got we got stickers so if you want a sticker uh you can do that two ways essentially uh you can uh email us at big t little t podcast at gmail.com drop us a question drop us your thoughts on bad batch uh episode three where do you want to see this uh season go all that kind of stuff uh you can do that right there or you can uh, give us a read, rating on Apple Podcast and take a screenshot, tweet us, message us, DM us, whatever, whatever way, uh, email us. I don't care. Uh, and we'll read that rating on an upcoming episode. And yes, we will give you a sticker and some other things I'm sure we have laying around the house. Uh, but there you go. So. Uh, next week, we will be covering episode four. Uh, yeah, we always end this episode with truly wonderful. The mind of the child is. Uh, and may the force be with you always. Bye.